Oh, hello. My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Whoa. I'm filming uh, a few videos today and there seems to be this underlying theme of like shame. <laughs> <laughs> things that I either couldn't finish or in this case things I keep not getting to. Um, I thought that it would be fun for me to come on here and talk about 10 books that have been on my TBR the longest. Now the ones that I selected all are in physical form so um, I didn't include any ebooks and then I have some books that I have had on my TBR or I have owned for a very long time but I converted them from physical to ebooks, so I just didn't end up counting those. Um, so yeah, I just thought it might be kind of interesting to go through and talk about like why I want to read this book still, because these are all, like every single one of these are books that I still want to read. When I was um, going through this, I actually ended up unhauling a couple of books that I was like, oh, actually, you know what? I think I'm okay just letting that go. So these are 10 books that I still want to read, uh, and I just keep not getting to them. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about why. Uh, and I think what I'm gonna do is that whatever books of these that I still have not read by the end of this year, I will put on my 19 books I want to read in 2019 list. Um, or sorry, no, it would be that list will be done. It will be the 20 books that I want to read in 2020. Um, I will put whatever is left from this list onto there. So uh, I'm going to start at the one that has been on my TBR the least and work my way up to the longest and therefore the most shameful entry on the list. So first, Christian Meditation by Hans Urs von Balthasar has been on my TBR for five years. Also, one that has been on my TBR for four years is his history his theology of history, I think. So there's another one that soon will be making this list. Um, but Christian meditation, I really like Hans Urs von Balthasar. He is a Catholic theologian, but a very, um, what I would describe as sort of a 360 thinker, um, where I appreciate that he under, like he sees the things he's talking about sort of like holistically and he can make arguments like he can essentially anticipate arguments really well and sort of speak to them and and speak to you know objections or whatever that you may be coming up with in your mind as he's discussing things um i've recently been getting back into meditation a lot more um you know with yoga and other things so um, i'm actually i'm pretty it's very short too so i think that this is a candidate of one that i may go ahead and try to read this year um but yeah he's a philosopher i really like and i think the reason i haven't read it yet is just because i went after grad school school. I read so much philosophy and theology in grad school that I think I honestly just sort of needed a break. And um, I think I'm coming out of that this year and getting more interested in those topics again. Next one that has been on my TBR for six years is We Others by Stephen Milhauser. Oh, this is the wrong one. This is Voices in the Night. Okay, let me go find the actual collection that I need to talk to you guys about. Okay, I went and got the right book and we inadvertently, uh, I inadvertently revealed to you the shame of the fact that I actually have two Stephen Milhauser collections that I have not yet read. This one, however, has been on my TBR for longer. And I really would like to read this. So he is one of the masters of sort of like um, magical realism in short stories. I think I've noticed there's a couple of short story collections in here. I think I don't read short story collections as frequently as I used to. I really should amend that because I quite, I enjoy them. I think I just have haven't, no, I just haven't been gravitating towards them in the last few years as much as I did when I was in my earlier 20s. Um, but yeah, I would really like to read this. And actually, I'll go to the next one because I bought this one at the same, actually the next two, I think I bought at the same time because all of these came from A Visit to Pals. So I also have The Groves of Academe by Mary McCarthy. And this is one of her two basically best known novels, the other one being The Group. And this one is essentially like a satirical take on academic life or like life at a women's college. And I just think that sounds great. I really like Mary McCarthy's nonfiction that I've read. And I just, I never seem to get to this one. So if I don't get to this one by the end of this year, this is a fantastic candidate to um, go on my 20 books for 2020. Cause I really, I think I'll enjoy it when I make myself get there. Um, and same, Josephine Tay, Brett Farrer. Uh, I remember reading one or two Josephine Tays, I think back when I was in the height of my Christie reading furor and I was like looking for more um, kind of golden age, of, golden age of detective fiction authors. Um, and I got this one at Powell's and I'm sure I will like it. <laughs> I'm sure I will. I just never seem to get to it. So again, if I don't get to it this year, this is one that I would be happy to see on that list next year because I think I'll really like it when I just sort of make myself focus on it. 
And then the last one that is six years old is Diving Bells by Lucy Wood. And this is another short story collection um, that it has a lot of sort of magical realism type elements to it. Again, this is one that was recommended to me by Simon Savage uh, through his podcast back in the day when he had a podcast. I don't know if he still does that or not, or if he only YouTubes, but I used to listen to that podcast all the time. And this is one that at the time he really enjoyed. And uh, yeah, it sounds like he'll be right up my alley. I really like short stories. I really like magical realism. Um, again, another one I'd be very happy to see on the list for next year because I don't really see this happening for this year, but I really would like to just go ahead and read it. So those are all of the six-year-old ones. Now we move one year further back, I think, yes, uh, to seven years old. The Death of Adam by Marilyn Robinson. Marilyn Robinson is a fantastic essayist. I have read and enjoyed many of her essays sort of one-off-y, um, just either as a sign to read or things I've happened upon online. But this is a collection of hers that I have not yet read. I bought seven years ago. I'm sure I would enjoy. But um, yeah, I don't know. It just, again, I think some of my taste in essay collections has shifted a little bit since I bought this um, I, because I tend to enjoy essays that have a little bit more to do with the current sort of political moment right now. Um, and I'm less interested in sort of like broader essay collections. So that might be part of why this one just keeps not getting read by me. But um, I really love her. I love her writing. So I'm sure when I get to this, I will enjoy it. And then the final essay collection we will talk about, or sorry, short story collection, is Dr. Olaf Van Schuyler's Brain by Kirsten Minger Anderson. This is a collection that was recommended to me through the Book Rageous podcast back in the day, and that is why I've had it for nine years, or eight years at least. And um, yeah, I just think that it just keeps not being a priority. These are interconnected short stories. That's something I usually really love, and I have every reason to think that I will at least like this. But again, I just think I've not been as much in the mood for short stories in the last few years for whatever reason. So maybe this is a good sort of check in because I think in 2018, I realized like, oh, I've just not been reading as much sci fi as I used to. So I've been kind of rectifying that in 2019. Um, this is sort of reminding me like, oh, I haven't been reading short stories the way that I used to and I should maybe try to fix that. So anyway, if I don't work this in by the end of the year, I will I will happily have it be a part of project short stories for next year. Okay, and then I've had these two books for nine and 10 years respectively, and I have not read them for the exact same reason, which is that they're big, long, hunkin' nonfiction tomes. So one is The Decline and Fall of the British Aristocracy by David Canadine, and this is a history of the British aristocracy essentially at the beginning of the 1900s um, through kind of the second world war ish I think uh and I think I will I love this as a topic I will enjoy this I am pretty sure it's just real long and I tend these days to prefer my nonfiction as audio and I've not been able to find an audio of this so this is a situation where basically I just I'm gonna have to pick a time to buckle down and read this in print um which again it just tends to not be how I like my nonfiction these days and then That Sweet Enemy, uh, Britain and France, The History of a Love-Hate Relationship. I've had this for 10 years and um, I, less so now, but I would say definitely in my teens through my early 20s, I absolutely loved French history. Um, I read a lot of, you know, kind of popular French histories is something I was very intrigued by. And I think this topic of kind of the um, historical enmity between France and, and England should be something that I would really enjoy. But again, it's just sort of chunky. I've not been able to find an audio and uh these days that just tends to be I prefer to consume this kind of nonfiction as audio so I think that is why it has been on there so long if both of, well I say if both of these are going to end up being on my 2020 because there's no way I'm getting to these this year so these will have to be kind of big projects next year I think just in terms of me shifting my mindset of how I like to consume that genre um, I'm gonna have to sort of like steal myself for that so those were nine and 10 years old. And then we come to the physical book that has been on my TBR the longest. It has been on for 13 years. And I had hoped that I was going to read at least one of these <clears throat> this year. I'm thinking that's less likely. So this will more likely be hitting uh, one of my TBRs for next year. And that is Living, Loving, and Party Going by Henry Green. Three different novels in one bind up. 
Henry Green was somebody who has been recommended to me as a more classic author that I would really enjoy, who really captures the sort of country house interwar period really well for the UK. Uh, and yeah, this is, I, I don't, I think this is basically just a literary fiction novel about um, country house living. And I think I'll like it. I just keep not getting to it. So this is one, again, I put, I think I put Loving on my TBR this year. I'm thinking I'm probably not going to make it and therefore uh, I will happily put it on for next year's, probably on my classics TBR because I think this is from the 20s or the 30s. So we will see um, how that shakes out. But yeah, this is my most shameful book because it is the one that has been on my TBR for the longest. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that little trip down memory lane with me. Uh, I think kind of if I was going to take one lesson from this is just that I do think looking at this my tastes have changed slightly over time and I think my ways that I like to consume things has changed slightly over time which I think is what is putting all of these as ones that have just been on my TBR for a long time. Um, all of these still sound appealing to me though. Like I said, none of I, I've been unhauling things that I got back in the day that are no longer appealing to me. Um, I think I just, I think one of my big takeaways is that I, I really have kind of lost my connection with short stories, which used to be very strong. Um, and I, I'd like to get that back. They're a really great way, especially if you don't have a lot of time to read and you want a complete story, short stories are a fantastic way to do that. So, um, I do traditionally really like short stories and I, I should lean back more into that. But anyway, um, those are the books that have been on my TBR for the longest. Uh, let me know below what books have been on your TBR the longest. What book is staring at you from your shelf and you know you should read it and you just keep not doing it? Let me know that below. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all of that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you guys are having an absolutely lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.